You're late. I know. Let's just do this. That's a lot more than last time. There's a lot more people than last time. It's ready! You're watching Throttle Heads. I'm Thomas. And I'm James! And we just drove the Lamborghini Countach, and it was... That feels pretty quick! Yeah, uh, it's quick! Interesting. But you see, if you were a young 80s professional, or you were Elton John or Dr. Dre, you don't actually want a race car for the road. You want people to think you have a race car for the road. And you want to be comfortable. Enter the Ferrari Testarossa. <laughs> AKA the Ferrari Redhead. 4.9 liters mid-engine flat 12, cheese grater side vents, gated manual transmission, 380 horsepower and a five seconds zero to 60 time. It's not a light car at over 3,500 pounds, but this is actually a Euro-spec Testarossa. So it weighs an adult human less than the US spec and has a smidge more power among other things. Either way, if you don't look at this 1988 wedge and see images of palm trees, linen blazers, and Don Johnson, then we say, at the very least, maybe you should see it as a potential supercar bargain. This thing is all 80s flash, and the cool thing is, even though the Countach now sells for the price of a new Aventador, you can pick up these for the price of a new 911, and not even the turbo. And the beauty of this, and the Countach, is that if you're buying an 80s classic supercar, you're not doing it just so you can have a fast, comfortable cruiser. You could buy a BMW M440i for half the money. No, you're buying it for theatre. Experience. Drama. Excuse my French, but I want it to make my bollocks tingle. So does the Testarossa deliver? And if you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing about. So subscribe, hit the bell. When I think of a supercar, it has to include noise and speed and a little bit of fear. We just got out of the Countach, as Thomas said, and that was one of the most physical drives we've ever experienced. By the end of the day, we were sweaty husks of human beings. Immediately, getting into the Testarossa, it's not really like that. The gears, being only five of them, are quite tall, but you can just roll onto the power. This is foot to the floor here. And it just rings it out. It's so glorious, it's so smooth. Now, given the reputation that this has, you want it to be nothing more than just noise and quaaludes. But we've heard that the Testarossa is actually quite docile, it's quite quiet, like in stock form, it's just not enough supercarness. But the owner of this one has done what a lot of owners do. He switched out that exhaust for a 2B exhaust because you don't want a 12 to be sleepy. Maybe in a luxury car, with this change and the fact that this is a Euro spec and has no cats, what, what's happened is you've ended up kicking a Snorlax in the face. Woken it up. And it's angry. 
Three. That's a Ferrari. So, as far as we can tell, the experience of a 1980s flat 12 Ferrari has always been there. Think of the exhaust and the fact that this is a Eurospec, so it's got no cats, is the car finally matching its late night 1980s Miami's owner's energy. But the thing is, as we said earlier, modern cars are becoming more and more insulated. So if you're buying a classic supercar, you don't only want it to be loud and bright red, it also has to be engaging. The Lamborghini Countach was scary at any speed. This is not. This is nice. It's approachable. The ride is really, really good. The visibility is great. The steering is light when you're on the move, even though it's unassisted. The Countach was engaging. It was a driving experience because you absolutely must drive it or you will just crash. This car feels like it could do some stuff for you. But again, that's not what I want. I want a driving experience. I want my Ferrari to become a Ferrari, to become a car that's derived from racing. This is that. This particular one is that very, very much. I feel like I'm doing the driving. Coming around here, I'm gonna downshift into first. A little bit of understeer. And then the rear goes. And then I am, I'm leading the dance right now. And I think that this hits that Goldilocks zone. What I mean by that is that it's not so uncomfortable and ancient that you wouldn't drive it every day. Air conditioning's working really well, I'm comfortable. But at the same time, I'm enough part of the driving experience that I feel like, I feel like I'm driving a supercar. Yes, it's a Ferrari. <laughs> So, I was just saying, I think that this is the exact right amount of supercar, but not so like punishing and violent like the Countach that it hurts and I don't like it. It's like, it's right in, and it's not too insulated. It's still fun to drive. It's like in this, this great zone, you know what I mean? Yeah, have you switched shirts? And why, that was, why have you tucked it in? Okay, I can, I, I'm trying. I'm just trying out all my Magnum PI shirts. Okay, I just wanted to try them all out, and and I'm really excited about it. This is my one time to do it. Okay, yeah, but did, he tucks his shirts he, in. I, yeah, but I don't think he drove a Tester also. No, he drove a 308. But just let me have it. It's a red Ferrari from the 80s. This is the one time I'm going to get to do this. Okay, okay. all can right, I just, fine. Is it, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Listen, you look more refreshed than we when we got out of the Countach. Yeah, the Countach was. I, I think you're right. I think this is in a zone. I mean, Ferrari understood that they didn't want their clientele or owners. Yeah. El Elton John didn't want to arrive at dinner no. with matted wet hair and swamp ass, yeah, which exactly. is what would have happened in the Countach. The Countach is like being tossed into a cement mixer for a few minutes, right? It's like right. you come out just destroyed. Yes. I, I am not destroyed. Yeah, I slept for three days after that. <laughs> this is fine. This is just this, really this nice. This has like almost NSX vibes. Which is oh, not okay. a coincidence because the no. NSX was the supercar killer. Right. And it came a few years after this, so it would have been around to fight this. Yes, yes, it would. But, but now they're the same price. Well, no, if you, if you count the Zanardi. That, well, that's double. That's double but, the but price. But a really of one of clean these. NSX, and I guess this isn't the most clean Testarossa. Yeah. But a re they're the similar price. So at what point do you get the Ferrari? Well, you, well, you, I, well, I was going to say, do you know what the NSX doesn't have? Use your Intuizione and open the, the engine cover. I don't think you should. There's two unlabeled. I don't think you should be using people's languages <laughs> oh, without knowledge. Okay, I'm going to guess front is front, back is back, and you're trying to... Oh. Good into it, That's the click of success. Oh, look at that. Okay. It's just such a beautiful engine. So the owner of this just did an engine out service. An engine out service. So they take it out, 
completely. Yeah, a lot of stuff was rebuilt, cleaned yeah. up. Like this looks like a brand new engine. And how much did that cost? It's really yeah, cheap. You said it was fourteen grand. Fourteen thousand dollars. Yeah. <laughs> is that, I, I guess an NSX that has to happen. Yeah. Yeah, NSX is a Honda. So <laughs> also, if you get into a fender bender with this, you're replacing '80s Ferrari parts. Yeah. Not '90s Honda. But when you do replace them, they look like this. Look at this. it's so cool to see it actually, right? Obviously a flat 12, and the engine is on top of the transmission instead of the transmission being back here, which means that the engine's actually mounted very high, which they kind of fixed in the TR. Yes. The car that's got way more stuff going on, way more aggressive than the Testarossa. Yeah. But everyone thinks it's a Testarossa. Okay, so we may as well explain this just while we're here. Yeah. The TR is not a Testarossa as far as I understand it. I always thought that it was, but when we started researching it... Because it, to, the, to the layman, it looks the same. It looks it's similar. It's got the same streaks. Strakes. Strokes. Strokes? Strix? What's strakes? Strakes. I'm pretty sure they're strakes. I'll go out for a nice strake dinner. No, the, I'm pretty sure they're strakes. You look it up. Anyway, I think the TR has the engine mounted in a different spot. It's actually oh. lower and further. And the wheels, the brakes, the suspension, the body, the interior were all redesigned. Okay. So it's not a Testarossa. So a but the TR... Stands for Testarossa. <laughs> Sit on that. <laughs> I think the design of this... That was really an elegant sound. It's got that German solidity. <laughs> it's like I dropped a radiator. Yeah. Um, the, the design of this is like, it's such a wedge. It's so 80s. It and, is, yes. And I think it maybe could be elevated if it was a spider. I oh. always, when there's a mid-engine car, I always want it to be the engine right behind my head. Yes. And because this is not as loud as a Kandash, the ability to take the roof off, Hey, where I'm going with this? They, they didn't make a spider. They made or one. Did they? They, they made one or spider. Did. Yes. For, I want to say Frank Abagnale Jr., but it's definitely not. It was someone Agnelli, who was the head of Fiat, and he requested one. He, and they made one just for him. They didn't put it into production for anyone else. And because this is a fun fact. Yeah. Because his name was Agnelli, and I'm, there's probably a better way to say it. The first two letters of his name, A G, on the periodic table is silver. So they made a one-off. Instead of aluminium badge, they made a solid silver Ferrari badge on the front of that spider. Yeah, and I looked that up and I was curious. And if you look at the badge, it looks exactly the same. Yeah. Because they painted it. So apparently it's, it's silver. A, well, you'd have to Is it? you'd have to shoot a vampire with it. And, then, <laughs> and that's, that's, how, you that's know. how you know. Uh, is it comfortable on the inside? That is the question. Oh, actually, no, this is a practical car. Okay. A livable car. Yeah. I don't want to forget this. There is a frank. Oh, okay. Which, if I use my intuition... Yeah, this is quite heavy. Okay, I didn't want to reef on it. Yeah. There we go. Oh, and there's a little pan. Oh, that's it. Yeah, that's the fuse, fuse that's, thing there. That's, that's just... I wonder if it... That's okay. It's dynamic. Yeah. And then when this is open, you can access... <laughs> dynamic. You can access your, your washer fluid and stuff. How convenient. But only when it's fully open. It's kind of neat. Yeah. Um, We've lost him. Okay. <laughs> um, in we go. Uh, okay. I can just turn the key on. I'm just going to put my window down. It's really hot in here. Okay. okay. Um, so, leather. Leather everywhere. Leather yeah. everywhere. Really nice leather, too, actually. I yeah. mean, it's nicely, it's nicely appointed. It looks spacious for you here. What do you mean for me? What is that supposed to mean? What are you well, trying to say? Just one, no, I just mean like the driver's side. I've got this big speaker here, and yep. for some reason, cars from this era, Kentash included, yeah. you've got to lean like this. Yeah, like they it. hadn't figured out where, how and where to put the wheel wells yet. And the steering <laughs> wheel is like... Yeah, apparently it's lean. worse in the BB, which is the uh, it's predecessor. It's like more horizontal. Yeah, it's even worse. <laughs> but this is okay. Like The driving yeah. position in this is okay. Yeah, seats are comfortable, if a bit squeaky. The seats are comfortable, and that's like a really important distinction because the seats in the Countach are so bad. Yeah, they really, they they're really so squeeze you in. They're so narrow. No, these squeeze you in enough. Yeah. I'm sitting on my phone here. Oh no. What? I booty called someone. Booty, what, what did you say? A you booty called? That's not booty. What's it? Butt, butt dialed. dialed. Butt dialed. Wait, are those not synonyms? Booty, butt, dial, and cool? Nope. Why do they nope, mean they, such they different mean, things? They mean very different things. Well, you know what? If I owned a Testarossa, same thing. You just, <laughs> okay. you get anyone you want in one of these. <laughs> oh my God. Listen, when I was driving this, yeah. I felt, 
and I can't even say it in a normal way, I feel cool, man. Yeah. It's not, I didn't feel cool. I felt Why cool. do you think I'm wearing these shirts today? This is a whole thing. You, you honestly feel really cool driving this car. And the visibility is fantastic. Like these A-pillars here, I'm sure they're plenty strong enough to keep this passenger cell intact in an, in an accident. <laughs> oh, speaking of crash, since this is a Euro spec, yes. it doesn't have this entire parcel shelf that you see on the... Um, the, the, the US spec cars, which is designed not only for holding things, but apparently to protect the passengers. In a, in a front on collision? Right. Yeah. In, in Europe, apparently, physics is different. Yeah. So I can confirm so. that. <laughs> the air is different here. There's more Cheesecake Factory here. Yeah, that's right. The, uh, that... I'm just trying to get comfortable. This, it feels like you're wearing Ross's leather pants in, in France. <laughs> I'm sweating about the same too. <laughs> uh, speaking of leather pads covering things up, yeah. this covers up a oh, radio. A radio. Blau punked. Blau punked. Uh, this Gage reminds me, yeah, this reminds me of the Countach, the squaring off. But it's not really squared, it's actually like curved a little bit here, right? And it curves under. The Countach is literally 90 degree angles. Yes. It looks like they took cardboard and then stuck it together and then put some leather over it. But there's still simply. What's that? Push the button again. <gasps> There's a mirror. <laughs> oh, this is the legendary mirror. What do you mean? For, for doing. Is it like who? Um. For medicine. Medicine. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The eye drops. Uh, yeah. That way, that folds in. That is really cool, actually. Yeah. yeah. And then obviously we've got some of the gauge cluster. In down the center, here, down yeah. here, yeah. And this is the this is the odometer. Yes, which is really weird. Yeah, apparently it stopped. Oh, it saved the game at seventeen thousand. <laughs> <laughs> Seventy-two. Yeah. Everything after it doesn't actually count. Nice big parcel shelf right there. Um, like it, like is this a strap? Oh, this is like a strap to like strap down your luggage. That's really yeah. Handy. I'm sure that's what it's for. It's probably another less kosher thing for. That you that you totally understand. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, that was <laughs> to say I had a sheltered upbringing. <laughs> I thought you were born in the streets. Correct. Yeah, a really nice. The street. next stage. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it was called Hummingbird Lane. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, uh, uh, what's his name? Billy Joel ruled the streets. Ruled the streets where you live. With lived, an yeah. iron fist. Yeah. Uh, these these colors are quite fun. They've had yeah. fun with the interior. Yeah. This this really fits oh. the vibe. Oh, thank God. Oh, that's some air. That's some air. The air conditioning actually works in this car, by the way, like no, the compared Kunt to the Countach. Countach apparently had no Freon in it. Yeah, but it, it had enough that I, you could feel that it was working cold and the, and the vents were really far away and the car is so hot in general. That was even a cool day that we drove it. This is a hot day and I've been fine all yeah. day. And well, despite its looks as well, the Countach had a really measly horn that sounded like a little train. Yeah, what's this one sound like? <laughs> it sounds like the oncoming train. <laughs> A very tiny one, though. Very tiny. I um, think this has been an interesting day. Very interesting. I feel like we did just get out of the NSX and Ardi and just got out of the Kuntash. Yeah. And so this, this supplies... Kind of caps, off, caps off a little uh, saga. Well, it completes the Wolf of Wall Street duo of, <laughs> yes. of Kuntash Testarossa. That's right. I, I don't know. I, I really, really do like this car, honestly. It's, I, I'm glad that we got to drive a Eurospec with the hotter exhaust because, I, as, I, as I said, I think that this thing really... It hits a sweet spot for me. It's exactly what I wanted this car to be. Still comfortable, still cruisy, makes some good noises, fun to drive. I'm also glad it's not concourse condition quality. So it doesn't feel like we had to baby it. It's, yes. not, it's not perfect. Yep. It's, it's to be driven. It is. And this car gives, gives you something back when you drive it. The stories of the Testarossa that tell of it being too insulated and a bit docile are maybe true for the US spec cars, but this particular Testarossa crosses the line into a zone where you get a proper 80s supercar experience without the typical 80s supercar discomforts. Yes, it's going to be a bit of a pain to maintain, and even during this shoot the distributor flooded with oil so the car wouldn't idle properly and it kept cutting out if the revs weren't kept high. But hey, at least we had an excuse for revving this super cool slice of Miami Vice to the onlooking patio drinkers. The Testarossa, despite its reputation, was educational, enlightening, and genuine fun for both of us. It's given us a hunger. Now we've got to try the TR. Thanks for watching. Sorry, sorry.
No, don't do that. Don't do that. Come on. No! The problem with that is the car just dies and everyone thinks you can't drive. So when you rev it back into action, everyone thinks you're not in gear or you're messing up. I'm not. I'm actually a professional and it's just not working. 